Good morning, Mount yep. Pisgah. Yep. There's, there's quite a few folks here this morning. I'm sort of surprised, but really glad to see everyone this morning. Um, the praise team would like to welcome you here this morning. And we're going to start out with a song called Come to Worship. We'll have us a little prayer and welcome. And then I would like for you to continue to stand for our second praise song, if you would. Okay. Sing out loud. Now is the 
So once again, good morning. Welcome to Mount Pisgah. We are really appreciative that you're here and being with us, whether you're in here or online. If you're a visitor, we do have some cards that you can fill out. We'd love to note that you were here this morning. So just take the time to do that and you can put it in the offering when that goes around. So just to let us know that you were here. Uh, let us pray and then I'd love for you to stand and sing our next song with us. So, Let's stand and pray. Stop that. But we're all ready to go. <laughs> Let's pray. Almighty God of heaven and earth, thank you for this opportunity to come together and be together. We ask for your inspiration and insights as we hear your word and sing praises to glorify you. In this time of Advent, give us your peace. And Jesus, our Lord and Savior's beautiful name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Saints are washed away. There was. 
washed away. Welcome Peggy Gwynn and Ashley Brule, her granddaughter, to come forward and uh, light the second candle to Advent. I got that right. So, where are y'all at? Right there, you're hiding. <laughs> hey, y'all. Change this one on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, for many of us, the call to head home is one of joy and of hope. We can't wait to reconnect with family, with history and tradition, with the wonderful time of freedom and loving support. We can't wait to go home. There are those who fear going home, however, and there are times when going home brings back memories that are not so good, not so healing. We are reminded of when we didn't fit in, when we didn't measure up, when we weren't loved like we needed to be loved. Home can be a difficult place for some. The prophet Malachi tells us that even when we are in the hottest of fires, there is a presence who can make us better, who can refine and purify. John the Baptist tells us that the road home is always under construction, mountains leveled, and valleys filled in to make smooth the path that leads us to our true destination, where we can live in peace and unity with all. 
we light these candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace, as a sign of our assurance that through the road is hard, though the road is hard, we believe it is worth the journey. It is time to go home. Thank you guys so very, very much. It is always wonderful um, to see multi-generations of a family worshiping together and lighting um, the um, Advent candle together. And it's always especially exciting when we have um, recent young adults who grew up in this church come back from college and choose to worship here as they are on their adulting journey. As many as you know, Ashley graduated from NC State last year and is in her first year of teaching teaching um, this year and it is great to have her um, and uh, her boyfriend worshiping with us on a regular basis and if you haven't had an opportunity to get to say hello to him I hope you will uh, do that um, after worship today um, this is a communion Sunday in the life of our church and I'll be honest with you I love communion Sundays they are my favorite Sundays if it were give, left up to me, we would have communion every single month. And here's why. Because communion Sundays provide us with an opportunity to pause and reflect upon why go to church. And that's the most common question I get asked all the time. Why do I need to go to church? I can have a relationship with God on my couch. I don't need to be in church to have a relationship with God. You do not need to be in church to be a Christian and living out your faith. So why? Why is the community of faith important? And Communion Sundays provide us with an opportunity to pause and reflect upon that. Why did Jesus just not say to the disciples individually, go out? He sent them out in groups of at least two. And when he commissioned them at the Lord's Supper, it was as a whole group, a community, a family. Now, already in worship this morning, we have been living out communion. And Jesus is, I believe, Jesus' vision for the church. We have had one, two, three, four, five, six, include me, seven different people. And how many deacons do we have in the back reading folks this morning? About three? Ten. Different folks this morning that you have encountered living out the gifts that God has given them. Greeting folks, leading us in music and in worship, lighting candles and leading us in prayers and in scripture. Part of why Jesus calls us together as a faith community, part of why we are part of a church is so that we can share those gifts with each other and use those gifts in the church and outside the church in the community to share the hope, peace, love, and joy that Christ came and modeled for us. Already this morning, we have begun to answer that question. Why come to church? Because sitting on my couch, I can't sing hymns or praises and hear the voices of other believers and see their faces and see how they are encountering God. 
Our scripture reading today is going to uh, provide us with an opportunity to reflect on one of the other, one of the many other reasons as to why we come to church. It is, comes from Ezekiel, and there's a misprint. It's actually, I think Ms. K couldn't read my handwriting. We're actually going to be reading today from Ezekiel chapter 37, not chapter uh, 3. But before I like, give you a chance to turn there in your Bibles if you want to, Ezekiel chapter 37. And while you do that, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Ezekiel because we are entering his story pretty far down the line today. Okay, Ezekiel is one of God's prophets. He was born uh, roughly 622 years before Jesus came along. Okay, he, um, and he is a contemporary of Jeremiah. If you were in worship last week, um, you guys know that um, Scott preached on Jeremiah. So Jeremiah and Ezekiel have very similar stories. They're living at the same time with the same commission from God, okay? They are living at a time where God has said to the children of Israel, stop. This needs to stop. When God um, brought the children of Israel out of slavery, he made a promise to them to give them a homeland, the promised land. And he promised that he would be with them wherever they went, and that this land would be a good land, and that they would be able to settle there and prosper and worship and live in fellowship with him forever. But it was a kind of an agreement, a covenant. And the children of Israel had some things expected of them. We know them as the Ten Commandments. They set up guidelines that say, God needs to be first in your life. And the other thing is, you need to love and take care of your community. You need to love God. And you need to love and care for your community. Well, fast forward quite a bit of time. And we all know from Old Testament scripture, the children of Israel haven't lived up to that in all kinds of different ways. And God has finally said, this has to stop. You are breaking my heart. You are destroying each other. You are destroying your witness to the world and you are shattering and fragmenting your community. And so God says this has to stop. And already in the story, the um, northern tribes of Israel have fallen to Babylon. God pretty much says, you haven't honored your end of the covenant, so I am going to stop, step back, and for a season, your land, the things I promised you, are going to be taken from your possession. And so northern tribes have already fallen. Jeremiah and Ezekiel live in the southern tribes in Judah. And God gives them a message that is similar in each book, which is what I've just told you. You have broken my heart. You have not listened to me. Please turn and repent. This is what is going to happen. And the whole first part of Jeremiah and the whole first part of the book of Ezekiel is all about that. And then in the second part of both of those books, God says, but. But I still love you. And I'm not letting go of you. I will restore you. And we are going to look at one of those wonderful illustrations, one of those wonderful pictures of restoration that God gives Ezekiel in a vision. Beginning with verse 1 of chapter 37 of Ezekiel. 
The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, who can these, can these bones become living people again? Can these bones become living people again? Now, Ezekiel is really smart. We should all take a, a, a chapter, uh, well, you know, a page from this chapter and follow his advice. He says, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know the answer to that. Essentially saying, I have no clue, but I understand your ways are way bigger and your power is way greater than anything I comprehend. So only you know the answer to this question. Then the Lord said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of God. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together, and they attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then, as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover the bodies. But they still had no breath. Then the Lord said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life, and they stood there on their feet like a great army. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in each of you, and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and that I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. May the Lord bless the reflections on his word today. When I read this passage, the very first thing that jumped out to me are some verses at the end of the passage where God quotes his people as saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. 
Our nation is finished. I don't know about you, but I hear from a lot of people, and there have been moments of time in the last 24 to 36 months when I have felt that same way. We are tearing apart our nation. I am tired. I am tired of hearing everybody, no matter what news channel you turn on, tear down somebody else. I am tired. And so then the very first question I asked is, this is our reality. How do we change that? How do we experience the hope and peace and love and joy again? So then I reread the passage. And the verses that struck out to me were from the beginning of the passage at verse 4 when um, God is giving um, Ezekiel his first words to speak. And he says, tell them, dry bones, listen to the word of God. There's an exclamation point there. This is what the sovereign Lord says. God's Spirit is promised and lives in each of us. And if we want to be restored, if we want to experience the hope and the peace, the love and the joy that Jesus Christ came to give us, then we need to stop and we need to listen. Now, I could send you home this morning and tell you you need to do that this week, but I think most of you are like me. You're going to walk out the doors of the church and into 101 other things to do. And with all the good intentions in the world that you have, that stopping and listening for a moment probably won't happen. And so we're going to take a chapter this morning from the life of our Quaker brothers and sisters. We're going to be silent. I want to invite you to stop and listen to the voice of God. And the question I want you to listen for an answer to is what is it that is drying out your soul? What is it in our world? What is it in your life that is sapping, sucking away the hope, peace, love, and joy that God's Spirit has planted in you? Let's listen to the voice of God. God has a ringtone.
dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. So does anybody want to share? What came to your mind? What are the things in this world, in your life, that, um, that are drying out your souls? Ah, uh, yes, yes. So um, I, I, I have to check because I think any time I've been in worship and I've done a moment of silence, someone's phone has gone off. And, and I think that's a great technology. Technology. There are some very wonderful things in the world, things about it. But when you're carrying it around in your pocket, it has the potential to interrupt anything else going on in life. So... Anybody? Anything else? Selfishness. Okay. Greed. Yep. And just not monetary greed, but I need to have my own way type of greed. Anything else? Convenience. Yeah. Mine was um, noise. Now, granted, I have four children, three of which are boys, so there's always lots of noise and way more noise than I might want to um, cope with. But I'm not talking about that noise. I'm talking about the noise of, you know, cars everywhere and 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 the noise of music playing everywhere and and the fact that if you if you think about it it is really hard to find a place that is silent and to have it silent even just for a minute or two and yet that silence is something that really restores me as an introvert I'm sure there are lots of other things that came to your mind and to your heart. And part of what we do on a communion Sunday is we pause like this and we reflect on our relationship with God, but also our relationship with each other in community. How is it that maybe you have been sucking the life out of others, out of those that you love? Maybe not intentionally, maybe not out of malice, but how is that happening? We're going to enter into a time of confession in a moment. And as we prepare to do that, I want to um, share with you these, um, these words from Scripture. While, while the people cried out, we have become old, dry bones, and all hope is gone, and our nation is finished, God makes it very clear Twice, he says, Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bones that they may live again. I will put my spirit in you, and I, you will live again and return to your own land. These moments of confession are going to give us an opportunity to return to our own land, to cleanse our hearts and return into the arms of God and just be held and reassured that we are loved. And that is what will restore 
our hope, our peace, our love, and our joy. That is what sews us back together. So if you were feeling dry this morning, during this time of confession, I invite you to imagine God putting you back together, nourishing you, and breathing new life into you. Would you join me in our prayer of confession? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of forgiveness. We thank you for your grace and your faithfulness. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And we pray that as the worship team comes to lead us in a song, and as we prepare to enter into a time of communion together, that your spirit would indeed fill us Restore us. Help our lives to be revived with the hope, peace, love, and joy of Jesus Christ. We ask these things in your Son's name. Amen. <laughs>
fountain Dip your heart in the stream of life Let the pain and the sorrow Be washed away In the waves of his mercy As time cries out to Why is the faith community important? Why do we come to church? Because when we are all dried out, we can't speak the words of life to ourselves. We need other people to remind us of God's promises. We need other people to remind us that we are loved no matter what. As we prepare to celebrate communion together today as part of that commitment to a faith family, I want you all to know that communion here at Mount Pisgah is what is called an open table. And that means anyone here, whether a member or not, no matter what your age may be, if you have accepted Jesus Christ and given your heart to him, then you are invited to participate in communion today. In just a moment, the deacons are going to pass out the elements um, to each of you. Um, in we, I know there may be some of you um, in the sanctuary who uh, would prefer to have individual cups and um, bread that has not been passed openly. So if that is the case, if you would just raise your hand so we can make sure that the deacons bring you an individual um, cup. Got a few in the back, wonderful. Peggy's getting some, slide your hands up again and she'll make sure it gets to you, thank you. For the rest of you, what's gonna happen is the deacons are going to bring the elements to each of you. We are going to press out the bread and the grape juice at the same time. We're going to eat it like you would as a family. So just hold on to it until everyone has been served and then um, we will uh, pray and eat together, okay? On the night that Jesus was betrayed, Scripture tells us he was celebrating the Passover meal with the disciples. This was a celebration of God rescuing his children from slavery. And Jesus used that occasion and that night to remind us that we too needed to be rescued from sin. He was eating the Passover meal in community with the disciples. Well, he did something very interesting, something different that wasn't usually part of the Passover routine. He took a small loaf of bread, he blessed it, and then he broke it and said, this is my body 
that's going to be broken for you. And he took it, said, take it and eat it. And he passed it around the table to each of the disciples, like the deacons are going to pass the bread to you in just a moment. A little while later in the meal, Jesus took a, a, a cup of wine. He poured in some more wine and he said, this cup represents a new covenant in my blood. And as often as you eat this bread or drink this cup, do it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of all the things you have seen me do, all the things you have heard me teach people about the hope, peace, love, and joy of God. Do it in remembrance of me, and then go and do the same thing. As we celebrate communion together today, we are committing ourselves in front of each other to do just that. To walk out this door and share the hope, peace, love, and joy of God the way Jesus did. I invite you to prepare your hearts now for communion.
praise team, you can go ahead and keep blessing us with a little bit of music while I serve the deacons, and then I'll come and serve you guys. Lord, our prayer is simple. We are thankful and in awe of the gift and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And as we eat this bread and drink this cup together in front of our family, we commit ourselves anew to living out the message of Jesus Christ, to being a people of hope, a people of peace, a people of joy, and a people of love. Guide us, Lord, and use us. Amen. Let us take and eat together. During our um, closing praise song today, um, we will also be taking up our offering. So in the spirit of uh, sharing our uh, love and joy and peace and um, this uh, holiday season, um, we appreciate the gifts that both you at home continue to faithfully give um, whether that is through online, and there is a link in which you can do that if you are joining us um, online this morning, or whether you're sending in um, your offerings. Um, so I'd invite the ushers to uh, come forward and collect the offering uh, during our closing song. Thank you, praise team. Yeah. 
earth a piece of mind. Those on whom his favor rests Come and worship Do not be afraid My soul, my soul Magnifies the Lord My soul magnifies the Lord He has done great things for me Magnifies the Lord. He has done great things for me, great things for me. just because I know we have some from the floor. Thank you, Praise Team. I really like that song. I haven't heard it before, but I hope you will do it again uh, Be this uh, Christmas season. I, I really like that a lot. It's a beautiful song. So we have uh, several announcements today. One of the joys of being part of a faith community is there is more that we can accomplish in missions sharing of the Advent gifts with the rest of the world than we could do individually. And we have several different ways in which we can do that this holiday season. The first one is through the Grace Creek Christian Center. And I'm going to let Kim Ellington, um, our director, share a little bit about the uh, needs that they have at the Christian Center. Thank you, Paula. Um, First of all, I want to say thank you to those who um, have already um, spoken for some kids. This year, I was only hoping to do 60 kids. I am now up to 76. Um, all the toys, um, or I should say all the kids have been spoken for or will be spoken for um, this week. What I am in need of are gift cards. Um, the middle and high schoolers need $100 gift cards to Walmart. I still need about six of those. And also, I need $25 Walmart gift cards because the elementary kids, in addition to toys this year, are also getting $25 Walmart gift cards for clothes because there is such a need for clothes this year for the kids. Speaking of that, the Christian Center is in need of children's winter clothes. Um, we have been blessed with donations for winter clothes and the men and ladies, but we are in dire need of children's clothes.
A, um, another um, great ministry to the community this holiday season is being coordinated by our women's group here at the church, Women on Mission. Um, thank you to all of you that helped provide. We did five Thanksgiving baskets for families at Alderman Road Elementary School, huge laundry baskets full with all the fixings for Thanksgiving and some more. We are doing five Christmas baskets also for Alderman Road families, five different families um, at Christmas. Um, and we have a lot of donations that have already come in, but there are a few categories in which we still need some stuff. We need some whole white potatoes, cans. We need canned yams. We need canned peaches. We need some jelly, macaroni, coffee or tea, packs of Kool-Aid, kids like Kool-Aid, some boxes of graham packers, one box of powdered milk, and some five pound bags of sugar. Now you won't remember that. I am going to post it on Facebook today in case you want to contribute to that. And I'm going to hand this card to Miss Jackie back here. If you want to talk to her after worship because you want to pick something up and you didn't hear um, what was there, she can uh, read those back to you. It's the ones that are circled, Miss Jackie. So. Um, Thank you all for being part of that project. We also, as a faith community, have a couple of fun events coming up. Uh, one is a mission to our community. So on uh, December 22nd, which is a Wednesday evening, from 6 to 8.30, uh, we invite you to come and join us here at the church. We're going to take the church bus, maybe a few extra cars, depending on how many people we have, to go Christmas caroling to some of our homebound folks. So if you were interested in going Christmas caroling with us, um, we invite you to sign up. There's a sign up sheet in back so that we know once again, that's going to be Wednesday evening, December 22nd, 630 to 830 p.m. Um, we also have next Sunday, or next Saturday, December 11th, the deacons are hosting a uh, catered holiday dinner here at the church. And that will be uh, begin at 4 p.m. Paradise Acres is, uh, is catering that. If you have not signed up for that, uh, please do so. I believe there's a sign-up sheet in the back of the church for that as well. And then the following Sunday is our very special Sunday. Next Sunday, December um, 12th, our praise team and our choir will be leading us in a Christmas worship celebration. And that will be intergenerational. So all the children will be in worship for that. Sunday as well. We will not be offering a, a children's church program. And we are doing a covered dish. Is that correct? Afterwards, Janice is shaking her head, so I got it all right. Okay. Any other important announcements that I have missed this morning? Yes, Peggy. This is really an Yes, uh, we thank you all uh, for your uh, prayers and, and your support. As we close uh, today, I, um, yeah. Yes, there is a business meeting um, this Wednesday night. Uh, we will be voting on the um, new congregational budget during that meeting. I don't know, is the budget available in advance? of that meeting did finance no okay all right so if you would like to see the budget in advance of the meeting um please um please contact the church office and we will have some of those available for you um this uh we'll get them printed out on monday so contact Kay in the office and uh you can swing by and and pick one up okay mark go ahead on December 18th, which is a Saturday, 
in partnership with the All Veteran Corps and the All Veteran Group Parachute Team, there's going to be Operation Toy Drop between 2 and 4 p.m. on Saturday, Saturday afternoon at the Parachute Center in Rayford. There will be, weather permitting, Santa and his helpers making a parachute jump, and then toys for kids of all ages, boys and girls, free 18th of December or Saturday from 2 to 4. So moms, dads, meemaws, and peepaws, come on out. Great. For our benediction today, I am going to use the uh, words uh, that uh, the Apostle Paul closed his letters to the Corinthians church with. This comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these words. Be joyful. Grow to maturity. Encourage each other. Live in harmony and peace. Then the love of God and peace will be with you. Greet each other with Christian love. All of God's people here send greetings to you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And for those of you worshiping at home today, we send our prayers and our love to each of you. Have a very blessed week. Amen. Thank you.